the M72 Law, a mass-produced light anti-tank weapon, cheap and effective. It was used throughout the Cold War era to modern times. This disposable tube has shown up everywhere, from Vietnam classics to a ton of low-budget 80s action films. So let's take a look at this prolific weapon and some of the movies it's been featured in, for better or worse. Hey man, I wouldn't do that. Shut up, Shut up. The M72 was first and foremost designed to be cheap, light, and easy to operate. It's a one-shot 66mm unguided anti-tank weapon with almost no recoil. It takes a few seconds to set up, aim, and fire, after which it can be thrown away. It was developed in the 50s and adopted in the 60s by the US Army and Marine Corps. <laughs> Much of the inspiration for the M72 law came from the German Panzerfaust of World War II, which had the same basic concept of being cheap, effective, and disposable. The Americans during World War II were primarily using the bazooka, which required two men to operate as opposed to one, and also required more training. The super bazooka which followed was more effective at knocking out tanks, but was heavy, a particular pain if used in jungle or mountainous terrain. I'm gonna bust its track. The light M72 had an intuitive design and was simple to set up, easily explained in the film Falling Down. Pull it off and then pull on both ends, the whole thing gets bigger. Like this? Yeah. Now flip that thing up, it's kind of like your aimer. The M72 is basically two tubes inside one another, which when closed offers a watertight seal around the preloaded rocket. There is no need to ever load this weapon, nor is it reloadable contrary to some films, which show it being used multiple times, though training versions can be reloaded with specific training rockets. I'll demonstrate how effective this weapon can be. The sights on the M72 are also fairly basic. It's a line of sight weapon with a range of around 200 meters. It is not heat seeking, as the occasional film would suggest. Heat seeking shoulder fired is fucking disposable. You could take out a jumbo jet with one of these. Occasionally, some sights for movie M72s are missing, and that's because they're from old spent tubes. Front sights were painted with radioluminescent paint, which is mildly radioactive. These old sights were snapped off and specially disposed of after use. On, let's go. The M72 held a self-propelled rocket, which makes it nearly recoilless. There is some recoil, so sight shouldn't be pressed right against the eye. As always, follow Chuck Norris's example. In firing, the rocket produces a significant amount of backblast, something that several movies highlight being cautious of, as this backblast can kill, including the operator if fired in a confined space. Bye. The rocket of the M72 is significantly more accurate and destructive than previous World War II generation rockets. When fired, six fins spring out to stabilize flight. You can comedically see a prop rocket being further stabilized by a wire in the film True Lies. Unlike on film, the M72 is used predominantly with a heat round. On impact with an armored vehicle or structure, the nose section of the warhead would be crushed, which would in turn detonate a booster charge located at the base of the warhead, setting off the main warhead charge. The main charge would then force a copper liner into a focused particle jet, which generated excellent penetration with minimal explosion. The original M72 warhead could penetrate 5 centimeters or 2 inches of armor, but it has remained effective against lightly armored vehicles well into the 21st century, with far more effective warheads with greater penetration. Some people like to compare the M72 with Soviet RPGs, 
but they're only really similar in that they are both inexpensive. The M72 is almost half the weight of an RPG. It is also not reloadable and has less warhead options. On film, the M72 is shown as frequently having the effect of a significant high explosive warhead. This is of course the standard for all 80s movies where virtually everything explodes. Just keep in mind that heat rounds only cause sizable explosions if they detonate other explosives. That being said, the M72 was used around the world with several different warheads, including some anti-personnel warheads. Now. One of the best sequences on film showcasing the M72 is from the film Bravo 2-0, showcasing SAS Special Forces using the weapon against Soviet Iraqi armor. Though much of this movie is fiction, Many of the combat sequences are well choreographed. Forex, what's that? Armor. Using short range anti tank weapons against armored vehicles while exposed or otherwise is one of the most dangerous roles for any soldier, though this is often coldly calculated as cost effective. I just can't feature that. Take it too hard, Rafter Man. It's just business. Probably one of the sillier uses of the weapon is in the Charles Bronson assassination film, where he plays a secret service agent protecting the first lady. Not that the public is always privy to knowing what secret service agents may be armed with, it's interesting to see one carrying multiple M72s. Also credit to the film for not making the mistake of reloading an M72, rather they gave him more than one. The bulk of military use for the M72 was during the Vietnam War, and it appears in a number of Vietnam classics. These were excellent weapons for jungle warfare, as they were watertight and easy to carry through the jungle. On film, however, these weapons dominate the gun smuggler shoot 'em up films of the 80s and early 90s, mostly because they're cheap for studios to acquire. Interestingly, this gun has been the subject of gun smuggling, including a recent case in 2007, where an Australian soldier attempted to sell several on the black market. Lars rocket. Beautiful. Today the weapon still sees limited modern use, as it remains effective in its newer variants. It also remains cheap, at $2,000 a unit. It has even been reported to be in use in the 2022 defense of Ukraine. What do I do now? Well, just look through the ammo, what you're aiming at. Must have known you wankers, and you dickheads. Alright, I'm Johnny. Thanks for watching this quick brief on the M72. Remember, there are lots of charities out there to help out people affected by war, be them veterans or refugees.